service continues on page four in our bulletin. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. Hallelujah. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. The calling for purity, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. Just before we begin, I ask persons to sit in the pews marked with the blue tape only, please. Thank you so very much. We are trying to still gather while maintain social protocol and to keep everyone safe. We can now be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 to 14. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring him from the land of the north, and gather them from the furthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father of Israel, and Ephraim in my firstborn, is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud in the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like the watered garden, and they shall never languish again. 
Then shall the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young man and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priest their fill. I will give the priest their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 6, 15 to 19. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe the word of the Lord.
continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, the second chapter, beginning at the 41st verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the ten temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. This is the gospel of Christ. of the living God fall afresh on each of us. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you, Father, for sparing our lives to see yet another year. We pray that you'll continue to give us strength, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, and give us understanding. And now that God, as I decrease, may you increase. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As a parish, we have chosen as our theme for 2021 the words stewardship, a call to accountability. Stewardship, a call to accountability. I want to use as a point of departure Ecclesiastes chapter 1, reading verses 2 and 3. Vanity of vanity, says the teacher. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. What do people gain from all the toil at which they toil under the sun? What do people gain from all the toil at which they toil under the sun? I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The book of Ecclesiastes, some scholars link to David, while others link it to Solomon. I will lean towards Solomon because Solomon was a man of great wisdom and a man of wealth of knowledge. The book talks about the pointlessness of humanity, how as human beings we have a tendency to chase after things and forgetting God, rather than going after God and allowing things to happen. Solomon was a wealthy man as we all know. 
He had cars, or if there were cars then. He had luxury, he had women. He had everything that most of us would want in here today to consider ourselves comfortable. But Solomon is calling us into accountability today by saying to us, you can have everything in this life. You can have everything under the sun. But if you don't have God, there will always be an empty void in your life. 2020, many of us, we have spent a lot of time chasing after things. Wealth, the nice houses, the nice cars, whatever it may be. Because society has taught us that we must have a certain look to be considered successful. And for what is worth, these very things have many of us taking pressure medication. Because it is so much to acquire these things. It is so much to get people to believe that we are successful. But when it all boils down, do these things really matter? When we are of an age and we cannot get upstairs because arthritis is in our knees, when we are at age and our driver's license are taken away and we cannot drive, everything we are fighting for, does it really matter? I can recall to mind when I was a curate in Freeport, Grand Bahama, serving at Christ the King. There was once a very wealthy woman. She had everything you could think of in life. After 42 years of marriage, she could not remember her husband, she could not remember her children, and she did not even know her name. But what was most interesting, every Wednesday when we went there to give her communion, we began by saying the call for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires are known and from you no secrets are hid. And believe it or not, she repeated the words before we even got to the line. It suggests that when everything is taken away from you in this life, only God truly matters. Can you imagine if we were boastful about God and boastful about our faith? the way we are about other things in life, the way we are so proud for everyone to know what side of the fence we are on politically. Imagine if we were like that for God. Imagine if we were quick to tell people, I am a child of the Most High King. I am a believer. I am a Christian. The way we are to tell people we are PDM, PNP, PLP, or FNM. We are so proud to boast about things in this life that will not last. We are so proud to boast about things in this life that really does not matter. But the thing that does matter, the person that truly matters, is the very one we often put on the back burner. 2020 is gone. Many of us wish and hope never to see it again. The events that has happened brought tears to our eyes. The things that has happened ached our hearts. But for these things not to repeat itself, we are challenged in the book of Ecclesiastes to put life in proper perspective. My grandmother always had a line where she said, get your priorities right. Know what matters in life. Many of us grew up with God as the focal point in our lives. Many of us grew up with church being the main thing we attend every week. Now God and church is a matter of convenience. I will go to church in the morning if I wake up. I will pray if I remember. God is no longer what he used to be in our lives. And 2020, with all of its drama, has brought us into a new year where we ought to be thankful and appreciative, knowing that had it not been for God, we would not have gotten through 2020. We are now in 221, a brand new year, a brand new season, a brand new beginning. And the challenge and the question must be asked. We are in a new year, but would we have the same old attitude? Would we be the same old people? Or will God find with us a positive people with a positive heart, knowing exactly who takes priority in our lives? Yes, don't get me wrong. Education is important. Finances is important. Living a comfortable life is important. But when these things take over from God, it then becomes a problem. 
I'm sure God wants us to have the best. The scripture says we must live life and live life abundantly. Which means we must be happy. But we cannot be happy knowing that things are taking the place that God once occupied. I can recall when in Barbados at Codrington College, at our graduation ceremony, after thinking of the tears, the grades we've gotten, all of the work we have put in, we walked on the stage and a diploma was placed in our hands. And I remember sitting on the side of my friend Richard Wood, now Father Wood, and I looked at him and I said, Richard, all this work, just for a piece of paper, all this stress, just for a piece of paper, all these tears over these four, three, three to four years, just for a piece of paper, and it's the same with life. When you really think about it, everything you are fighting to accomplish or attain right now can be destroyed in a matter of seconds. Even money. You can take out a hundred dollar bill right now and tear it to pieces. But there is someone who cannot be replaced. There is someone who cannot be destroyed. His name is Jesus the Christ the carpenter from Nazareth. The Bible said, I almost forget what the Bible said. <laughs> Nothing is impossible with God. That's a serious statement. Nothing is impossible with God. And the things we run after, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. I can recall there's a guy in Nassau. He's always at a chicken shack we have called Bamboo Shack on Nassau Street. And he walks and he says the words, trust me, trust me, trust me. That's what he called his dog. And if you get to know people who know him, they will tell you, that after everything was taken away from him in life, they're the only words he says. He calls the dog, trust me, trust me. When we lose things in this life, it could send us crazy because things have become our gods. When we lose people in life, it could send us crazy because we have placed people where we ought to place God. But Solomon is reminding us this morning be very careful in what you run after in this life. Be very careful what you toil for and after under the sun. Because only what you do for God will last. We all want to be successful, including me. But we all ought to want to hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. One thing last year has taught me in this pandemic there are some things I prioritize that really is trivial. There are some things I magnified that I really did not need to magnify. There are some things I held as priority that is really not priority. If it's one thing I got from COVID-19, it was that. Put things in proper perspective. Put people and places in proper perspective. And don't allow yourself to go crazy in 221 trying to accomplish so much until you lose yourself, until you lose your soul. Nothing can replace inner peace. I'm not just talking about a smile so people can think you're happy. I'm talking about inner peace. That peace that is down, down, down in your soul. Down in your soul to stay. That inner peace that brings you hope in the midst of storm. That inner peace that causes you to smile even when there's nothing to smile for. That inner peace that no one can take away from you. Too many of us, we have allowed the devil to steal our joy in 220. You have to learn how to smile in storms. You have to learn that, that weeping may endure for a night, but, but be hopeful because joy comes in the morning. Tears are not forever. Motivational speaker Les Brown says, if you could lay on your back and look up, that means you can get up. 
So don't be afraid of being down. But have hope. Hope in your God that your God will see you through. Sometimes we have to thank God for the bad times, you know. Because when the good times come, you could really appreciate it. When the good times come, you could hold on to them and you could be thankful for them because you know what the storm is like. You know what pain is like. This isn't something you just say or sing, but you know. So I want to encourage you this morning. Be very careful what you chase after in 2021. Be very careful what you make as your God in 2021. Be very careful what you put as priority in 2021. But whatever you do, find that inner peace within yourself. And I should not say this, but I will say this. Be selfish this year and make yourself happy. You hear me? I said, be selfish this year and make yourself happy. In other words, put yourself as a priority. Because we put people over ourselves for too long. It does not make sense. Making people happy and you unhappy. Make yourself happy. Be selfish if you have to. You have one life to live, my friends. Don't waste it chasing after things that does not matter. Don't waste it chasing after people that are insignificant. But waste it and use it on God and yourself. God has blessed this world with you. Another you would never be born. That within itself is powerful. So in 2021, for God's sake, make yourself happy. So when we roll out 221 and we bring it in 222, you could stand up knowing that, yes, like Frank said, after you did it your way. But you also did it in a way to please Almighty God. The Lord be with you. Booklets as we recite the words of the Nicene Creed on page 18. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten not made, one in vain with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for us our good. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That your name may be glorified by all people. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. that they may be delivered from their distress. And finally, let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Remember our sister Marie as she mourns the loss of her sister Sabrina. Pray for the family that God in his loving mercy will give them the comfort and healing that they need at this time. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only for the cause to your will and the good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The act of penitence as found on the bottom of page 20. The act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand for the greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. And have all been made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please feel free to give peace to the person next to you. Very pleasant. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you in the house of the Lord this morning and to say a very happy and prosperous new year to all of you. If we have persons who may be visiting with us this morning, if you wish to be recognized, we ask you to stand at this time as we give you a warm, warm St. Monica's welcome. Everyone is home. Amen. Just want to bring a few notices to your attention on page six. Wish to thank persons for their donation to Simonica's pantry. Thank you so very much um, for all the perishable items you have given. Persons have already been fed and families, and we give God thanks for your heartfelt donations. Also, I want to remind you that our virtual Bible study is ongoing on the first and third Sunday of every month from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. And on the 14th of January, 2021, at 6.30, we will launch or resume with our cell group meetings. All will be focusing on the theme, Stewardship, a Call to Accountability. So I ask persons to please look out for that. 
And parents and guardians, I am begging you to please, um, Greg, Fashina, Ancho, Jillian, Stacy, everyone who's a part of the youth ministry in this church. We are trying our very best to keep our young people engaged because we cannot be with them physically. So everything is virtually um, or virtual, whether it's Zoom or Link Teams. We don't have Teams, just Zoom. And normally when the link is sent out, we only have the same faithful three or four persons. When we have more than that in this congregation, we really want to be a part of our children's lives, even though we cannot be there physically, but we cannot do it without your help. So I'm asking you, please, once you see the youth ministry, send something out. Make sure your child is there to participate. Um, there are lovely things going on in Zoom. Last year, I think they baked cookies. Um, they had a painting um, contest. Had to paint the cross. There's so many things going on. But it is heart-wrenching when you put so much work into something and only a few show up. I'm begging you, please encourage your children, or I'm encouraging you to make sure that your children or child is a part of the Sunday school or CYM Zoom activities. So please listen out for that. And also our services through the week are at its usual times on Sunday, 7, 9, and 11, Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. and 12.30 noon, Friday morning at 7 a.m. and Saturday evening at 6 p.m. I take this time on behalf of the Vestrian people to publicly congratulate Deacon Job um, last week, Monday, he took on a bride. He is still on vacation in Nassau. Um, he will be back with us next week um, to start work as a married man. So I'm happy to have him back so I could take a break. <laughs> so I welcome him back. He will be with us, I think, next Sunday, which will be Epiphany Sunday. And I just went to congratulate him for being so quiet today after I threatened to put him out last week. And now here he goes. <laughs> you want to come up here? Little wee. <laughs> you get that salt cake's blood in him, boy. <laughs> but thank you all so much. On the 15th of this month, makes three years since I was here. And, and I thank you all for your support and your love over these last three years. Um, I say this without any reservations. Um, I hope people from other parishes are not watching. But <laughs> this has been the best cure I've had as a priest. I mean that. I mean that. Um, if, um, if we now go along, I don't listen in drift. <laughs> you know, but, but as you grow, you, you grow into things. And, and this has been one of those parishes that has been wonderful to us. Um, throughout the ministry or throughout years, you've had challenges, but challenges will come in anything you do in life. But, but there is no church. Father Glover said it. Father Bernard said it. Father Scott Brennan said it. And I think Scott will still come back here to be rector. This is one of the best parishes in the diocese. I say that without any reservation. I mean that. And, and, and even within that, we are then called to do more. As you hear about stewardship throughout the year, it's where God is challenging us to know that stewardship is a way of life. As Anglicans, we have a tendency, we love church, we love our faith, but we put God on the back burner. It is so strange. We cannot love this church without loving God. And we cannot love God without giving up our full selves. So you'll hear a lot more about stewardship, be it your time, your talents, and your treasure. And we're asking you throughout this year, Let's continue to make Monica proud. Let us continue to make God proud by putting our best foot forward. Amen?